Good morning, and welcome to Ark and Dove Presbyterian Church in Odenton, Maryland. I'm Brian Boudreau, the Clerk of Session here at Ark and Dove, and your host in The Lobby, the weekly program of the goings-on here at Ark and Dove. So today is the reign of Christ and our celebration of Matthew 25. Lori Kronzer is here today to tell us about that. And Advent starts next week. But first, let's look at this week's announcements. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? If you are alone or just with your family, Ark and Dove will be offering a worship and fellowship opportunity by Zoom at noon on Thanksgiving Day. There will be a beautiful quartet singing from Margaret's house, and Pat will provide acoustic guitar from his parents' house. The service will start with silence and instrumental music. It will last about 20 minutes. Uh, then there will be fellowship afterwards. Email admin at arkandove.org for the Zoom invite. As I said earlier, Advent is right around the corner, and there are lots of things we are preparing for. So here are some of those. Uh, we are doing the Holiday Sharing Christmas Gift Program, again with the Anne Arundel County Department of Social Services. There will be a few changes this year, including an online uh, system for signing up. So you can contact Greg Maycar for more details. The flower team and logos are making advent wreaths for every household in Ark and Dove. Be sure to get yours by signing up online through the archive, or you can always call the church for more details. Presbyterians Today has an advent and Christmas devotional available entitled, Let Us Light Candles, Matthew 25 and the Work of Advent. The link is provided in the archive. Uh, Margaret and Pat are putting together some amazing musical arrangements for Christmas. If you'd like to share your musical gift with Ark and Dove and are not already receiving updates, please contact them. The Stephen Ministry recognizes that this year will be different than past. If you are going through a difficult time, Stephen Ministers can walk with you on your journey. So please contact Lori Barrow or Kelly Burnett to find out more. On Christmas Eve, there will be three events that you should uh, be aware of. Christmas Eve Children's Service is at 4 via live stream. Lanterns and Luminaries at 5.30 on the church grounds. And Christmas Eve Service at 7 p.m. via live stream. Still, we have lots of fall activities going on as well. So join Kim Champagne this Wednesday evening at 7.30 for the last discussion of Diane Butler Bass's book, Grateful. And as you know, you don't have to have read the book to participate. Wednesdays at 10 a.m. is a weekly Bible study on the upcoming Sunday scriptures. I've been assured there is no commitment or homework from Pastor John, so you can contact him for a Zoom invite. For our youth, Godly Play is still every Sunday from 9 to 9.40 a.m. via Zoom for kids, grades K through 5. Julie Devers can get your kids signed up for that if you're not already. And Logos continues for the youth. Uh, this week is off for Thanksgiving, but December will be Peace Month and they'll start with Learning Week first. Contact Amy Goldberg for more details, and if you'd like to volunteer, Jenny Roman is the person to contact. Campfire Corals will meet again next month on December 9th from 7 to 8.30. The theme will be Capitalism and its Alternatives. You can get more information and RSVP with Pastor John. The Annapolis Lighthouse Homeless Prevention Support Center needs gently used sleeping bags and tents. If you have one that you'd like to donate, please contact Jen Roman to arrange a porch pickup. And now for our social events, Sunday Fellowship is right after the service at 11.15. Email fellowship at arkandove.org for the Zoom invite if you don't already have it. The crafting group meets the first Monday and third Wednesday of every month at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Amy Tardif has that invite for you. Saturday night game night with the Deacons, uh, playing code names. Uh, Ellen and Greg Maycar have the Zoom invite for you there. And the Friendly Seniors Tea at 3 every Thursday. Pastor Tim has the Zoom invite for you. This week, we are celebrating Ark and Dove's acceptance as a Matthew 25 church. A big deal. To understand what this means, I've asked Lori Kronzer to join us to talk about Matthew 25. Welcome, Lori, to the lobby. I'm glad you could join us. Tell me, how is your family doing? Thanks, Brian. We're doing well. Um, we're just sheltering at home basically not going very many places at all we're good so i will ask you how long have you been at ark and dove and what drew you to the church my adult daughter and her at that time boyfriend and i started coming in 2016 they had just recently moved to odenton and um i'm good friends with judy and jim cooper 
So I had heard wonderful stories. And then as um, Krista and Ben were encouraging me to join them and come check out the church, and I drove up and saw the uh, Dismantle Racism and Join Us in the Conversation banner, it was like, okay, I'm all about this. So we've been very happily uh, members since early 2017. Oh, wonderful. So you were just talking about your first time uh, coming here. Uh, do you remember what, what Linda Lewis called the longest walk? When you get out of your car and walk to the front door, what, do you remember what that was like? I don't remember, but I have a very funny story about an earlier visit years before that when I had just come out of the clear blue just to visit. And I knew I was coming to uh, Piney Orchard Parkway, but rather than turning right, I turned left and went way out into Never Never Land. Mm -hmm. And when I realized I was in the wrong place, I pulled into like an open field and unbeknownst to me, caught my front bumper on a big rock or something and ripped the bumper so that it was almost falling off. And so I pulled into the parking lot at Ark and Dove with my front bumper hanging like, <laughs> terrible and um, everybody was staring and I got out of the car to take the, the long walk and the long walk got much much longer I was mortified to see that my bumper was literally hanging on by shreds so yeah Jim I don't know who all it was but after the service Jim Cooper and several guys came out and ripped that sucker right off and put it into my van so I could take it to the body shop. It was like the stupidest thing ever. So you don't forget that moment, of no. course. <laughs> All right, so tell us about Matthew 25. What does this mean? Well, Matthew 25 is an initiative out of the Presbyterian Mission Organization at the, at the Louisville level, at the national level. And um, after... Uh, the killing of Trayvon Martin in mid 2000s, um, the church felt that something needed to be done, something needed to change. And so based on the scripture that John is going to preach on today and that will be read, I'm gonna read a little bit of it. Um, Matthew 25, 31 to 46, I'm just gonna read a little bit of it. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And this is the convicting part of the scripture, I think, that motivated um, the General Assembly in 2016 and 2018 to create this initiative um, to take care of the least among us. So they, they invite churches all around the nation to, to become Matthew 25 churches in order to uh, focus on three areas within the, the church. One is building congregational vitality. Uh, one is dismantling structural racism. And one is eradicating systemic poverty. And some churches choose to do one of those. When we um, accepted the invitation, we went ahead and signed up for all three. And the feeling behind that was we are well, well down the road on all three of those initiatives. We've already done the CAP survey. We have a long range planning team with a three year plan. Looking at the seven marks of congregational vitality, we have a lot of it in place already. And then of course, we're working diligently on dismantling structural racism with the social equity team. And almost everything that the mission um, ministry works on is working to eradicate systemic poverty. It really was um, a, a logical step for, for us to take. So there are these three sort of tenets of, of the Matthew 25. And as you've said, we, uh, Ark and Dove is already working um, towards all three of those. But who decided to pursue this? Like what was the process to becoming a Matthew 25 church? Two summers ago, I went to the uh, big tent gathering of the Presbytery in Baltimore, and um, there was someone passing out uh, memorabilia, kind of, and, and she gave me a spiel about Matthew 25, and I had never heard of it, of course, and it was brand new at that point, or relatively brand new, and so when I came back home, I said to Tim, you know, 
has there been any discussion about this? And he said, no, not really. I don't know too much about it. And it's going to take a holy troublemaker to get that off the ground. So um, sometimes I kind of consider myself a troublemaker as far as um, stirring up uh, equity types of things. And so I just let it sit there for a while. And um, the more I got involved with the anti-racism team, the more I thought, doggone it, I think I might have to be that holy troublemaker. So I talked to Lenny Gardner and Paula Sparks about it, and they thought it made total sense. So I mentioned it to Tim again, and he said, well, let's talk about it. So we talked about it, and then we talked to the mission elder, Cheryl, and she was very much in favor of it. At the anti-racism team meeting, um, we recommended and requested that Cheryl take it to session. And session was like, well, that sounds like a no-brainer. It sounds like what this church is already doing. And so then it was just a matter of going on to their website, to the uh, Matthew 25 website, and um, filling out a, a, you know, a membership form saying we would like to accept your invitation to become a Matthew 25 church. Wonderful. So now what? Um, how does that change what we are doing here at Ark and Dove? Well, that has yet to be determined, I think, but it gives us three pillars to always keep in mind at our mission meetings, possibly at session meetings, um, and any other missions, ministries, excuse me, that are meeting to uh, figure out what, you know, what should be their next action to support the people of the church and the people of the community. Um, how does that align with Matthew 25, and how do we take care of the least of our brothers and sisters. What can happen from now is that the Presbyterian Mission Organization will provide curriculum, study guides, Bible study handouts, and you know things to work with along those lines. And, and they're just a cheerleading group as well. And they love to co collect um, photographs and reports of what Matthew 25 churches are doing. So are there other uh, Presbyterian churches in the area that are Matthew 25 churches that we know about already? There are 18 in Maryland, okay. including us. So is there any regular sort of um, coordination among the, among the churches in the Matthew 25 group? I do not know of that. I will be uh, interested to find, find out about that. So do you foresee then any new programs or initiatives? What, what can we expect to see here at Ark and Dove? Um, maybe any changes? Well, we've already added all kinds of uh, Matthew 25 information to the Facebook page and uh, Mondi will be working on getting that up on the, the website. Um, but we're just barely getting this off the ground. So I, I, I don't know. I'm look, looking forward to finding out how that will all turn out. So the message is stay tuned. Exactly. More to come. Exactly. More to come. <laughs> right. So, so if I wanted to learn more, uh, where can I find more information? So I have this brochure, and there will be some of these at church once I bring them over there. Uh, their website is... I think you can find it at the website pcusa.org slash Matthew25. There we go. So, yeah. And you said there's stuff on our webpage uh, right now. Is that correct? There's definitely things on our Facebook page. There will be information available on the website soon. Absolutely. And there is also a Matthew25 Facebook page itself, so people could actually go there and join that to get updates from around the, the nation. Oh, wonderful. That's great news. So uh, in that same vein, I understand that there's uh, something coming up in early December. There is. The Anti-Racism and Social Equity team is going to be having another um, at, uh, Racism 102 forum. We did 101 in October. And so on Sunday, December 6th, from 3 o'clock to 4.40, we'll be doing Racism 102. And you don't have to have attended Racism 101 in order to attend this one. Um, the focus will be on internal and interpersonal racism. That's great news. Well, thank you so much, Lori, for joining me today and sharing this great news about Matthew 25. Uh, I think this is a, it's a really great mark for the church. And, uh, and I thank you so much for taking the initiative and pursuing that. My pleasure. Thanks, Brian. And to all of you who have tuned in today, I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, things are different this year, and many of us won't be traveling like we normally do. Uh, in fact, a recent study from the Capital Gazette re revealed that nearly 90% of Marylanders will not be traveling for the holiday. So if you find yourself alone or lonely, please know that Ark and Dove and the deacons, the Stephen ministers, the elders and pastors are here for you. If you need somebody to talk to, don't hesitate to reach out. 
So we are a community bound by God's love supporting each other. Sunday Fellowship is after the service starting at 1115. Have a great week. Wear your mask and the live stream service will begin in a moment.